the Hardy Boys, weekend at Kevin Spacey's house, will not be seen today. In its place, we bring the following presentation that's even more creepy. Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> Come in, fiends. Come into Tales from the Crypt. Once again, we meet for our shivery session. Yes, it's your host and holder, the Crypt Keeper, opening his man mag with a terrifying tale guaranteed to curdle your hair and curdle your blood. <laughs> Several issues back, I told you a yarn about a butcher which proved very popular. One avid fan even sent me a cleaver with complete directions for what he wanted me to do with it. <laughs> but it didn't sink in. So I decided to tell you another story about a butcher. One that I'm sure will tickle your spare ribs. <laughs> I call this meaty little morbid melodrama, as the nauseous cannibal remarked on a particularly hot day, taint the meat, it's the humanity. No one paid much attention to Zack Gristle before World War II. He was just another small town butcher, but that was before the war. Suddenly, with the advent of meat rationing red points and ceiling prices, Zack Gristle became very popular. Howdy, Zack. Morning, Mr. Gristle. Morning, Zack. Why did folks in line early, I see? <laughs> yep. Suddenly, old Zack Gristle found himself the most popular man in town. <laughs> Why not? He was the only butcher. Remember those days, kiddies? Ration books. So many red points for each pound of meat. So many red points allowed each person per month. It was pretty tough. The situation, that is. Oh dear, I only have 41 points left, Mr. Gressel. Can I owe them to you? I'm awfully sorry, Mrs. Vinko. I need those points in order to buy the meat myself. I couldn't do that. No sirloin steaks, Mr. Gressel? Sorry, Mr. Fuddy. I just sold the last one to Mr. Cuspatore. I could let you have a few pork chops. Sorry, Mrs. Dickelberg. Nothing but salami left. I expect another shipment tomorrow, but you better be in line early. First come, first serve, you know. Poor Mr. Gressel. He tried so hard, and he's so honest. This rationing certainly is hard on him. Yep, meat rationing was hard on Mr. Gressel. That is, until he discovered an interesting fact. I could get a nice steak, Mr. Gristle, at her uh, pay. We sort of forget about the ceiling price. But that's dishonest, Mr. Vandercliff. That's black market. No telling how long this war will last, Zack. Might as well make hay while the sun shines. There are a few of us who'd be willing to pay enough to get what we want. But what about the, the, the poor people, Mr. Vandercliff? Suit yourself, Zack. You're one of them now. You could be pretty well off if you'd use your head. Think it over. Uh, I, I will, sir. Uh, I'll think it over. One thousand, two thousand. Oh, pardon me. I was just counting my loot from the black market operation I was in during the war. <laughs> there was a shortage of caskets, you know. I dug up an idea on how to cash in. All I had to do was clean off the dirt and polish him up again. <laughs> As for Mr. Gristle, well, let's look in on his home life. <laughs> Junior, eat your meat. I'm not hungry. Seventeen points. You say something, Zack? Huh? Oh, no, I was just thinking, dear. Yep, Mr. Gristle thought it all over, and he made up his mind. Mr. Gressel, there isn't a decent piece of meat in your whole showcase. That's all I've got, Mrs. Grundy. Shortage, you know. I waited in line for two hours. I'm the first customer you've had today. That's all I've got, Mrs. Grundy. I I'm sorry. But at night, shadowy figures would come to Mr. Gressel's store. Here's your steak, Mr. Vanderclip. Ten pounds. And here's your thirty bucks, Mr. Gressel. Oh, I've got another customer for you. He wants steaks too. Well, I can't get any more, Mr. Vandercliff. I don't get enough points as it is. I'm giving the leftovers to the folks in town. 
You could figure something out, Mr. Gristle. The folks in town pay points for their meat. Isn't there any meat that you can get without red points? And at the three-quarter market, it's fathead by a fathead. And now, at the stretch, it's, it's hold it. Fathead just stumbled. <laughs> Looks like he's busting his leg. <laughs> Too bad. Now they'll have to shoot him. <laughs> and he was such a good horse. Too. Uh, Mr. Gusso, you listening? Junior, eat your meat. I'm not hungry, G. You expect me to eat like a horse? Horse meat. You saying something, Zack? Oh, oh no, I was just thinking, dear. Yep, Mr. Gusso found a solution to his problems. He began buying horse meat and palming it off to his poor customers as the real thing, thereby getting those precious red points. My, you have such a nice selection now, Mr. Gristle. Yes, what would you like, Mrs. Schnud? Some steak? Chops? And with the precious red points, he'd purchase good meat, which he'd sell in the black market. These steaks are going to cost you more money, Mr. Vida Clip. I'm taking big chances now. Five dollars a pound from here on. Okay, okay. Now listen, I need 20 pounds next time. I'm having a banquet and my friend needs 10 pounds. Can you get it for us? Soon, the horse meat wasn't enough. Mr. Grizzle had to find other avenues of supply. Look, Grizzle, I'm supposed to sell this meat to zoos. It's too old for human consumption. Been laying around the warehouse too long. Now, for a prize, and no points. No points, Gristle. I'll take it, but not a word, understand? Not a word to anyone. <laughs> First horse meat, now stale meat. <coughs> Mr. Gristle certainly was sinking lower and lower, but no one suspected nice Mr. Gristle when a few people, the poor people in town, fell seriously ill. How's your husband today, Mrs. Horton? Better. Thanks. Now I've been feeling too good. But one night... Mr. Gristle is in the inn. He's out walking. Well, just tell him he can pick up another load of the slop. The, the, the what? The what? The stalemate. The junk. The stuff he's been selling. As good stuff, you know. Oh, yes. I I'll tell him. Tell him I got some more horse meat for him, too. Bye. Mrs. Gristle closed the door and stared at it for a minute. Then she went out. She arrived at the butcher shop a few minutes later. <clears throat> Here's your meat, Mr. Vandercliff. Thanks, Zack. Don't take it, Mr. Vandercliff. It's so old. It might be horse meat. Sarah. Here, here. Not this stuff, Mrs. Gristle. I pay six bucks a pound for this stuff. Zack's regular customers get the junk. <laughs> six dollars? Black market? Bright kid, Miss Sarah. Quick with numbers. Ceiling price $69, 6 to Vanderclip. Black market, it figures. <laughs> but she's a good kid, Mrs. Gristle. She's real mad. After Zach's customer leaves, You're selling meat on the black market? You keep out of this, Sarah. And you're passing it off, horse meat, and stale meat to your customers for red points. We're going to be rich, Sarah. I don't want that kind of money, Miss... Mr. Horton was terribly sick. Was it from your meat? Probably. Who cares? Anyway, I want the money. After the war, I'm going to retire. I've socked away six grand already. You've got to stop this. It's against- Ha! Huh. Ask out Stork Man about his gasoline business. Find out about Finch's tire racket. Everybody's doing it. Why shouldn't I? Yep. Mrs. Gristle was awful mad. But she couldn't talk Zack out of it. He was determined to make his pile, no matter who suffered. Got a deal for you, Gristle. Got some tainted meat. Real bad. No one will know it, though. Got a process that covers it up. They won't find out till it's inside them. They'll feel pretty sad. I need some points badly. Got a big order to fill. Okay, I'll take it. So... Zack Gristle bought the spoiled meat and sold it to his customers. My sister-in-law is from out of town. She's amazed that we can get all the meat we want. 
<laughs> Just try to do my best, Mrs. Abercrombie. What will it be? Hmm. <laughs> Don't turn over the page to see what happens. <laughs> You'll get to it. It's coming. The beginning of the end commences to start right now. <laughs> Flowers for Mrs. Abercrombie. <laughs> what kind? Why, lilies, of course. Dead, you know. Did you hear Mrs. about Mrs. Abercrombie? Just died. Poison. They think her sister-in-law did it. P -p Poison. They're performing an autopsy right now. Oh, oh, uh, excuse me, Mrs. Gabba. If that's all you want, I'd like to close up. Miss Mr. Gristle shooed Mrs. Gabba out of the store and locked it up. Mr. Gristle was scared. Mr. Gristle was going to hit the road. Leave town. Take it on the lamb. How does that? <laughs> Closing up early, ain't you? Scared of the maniac? Ma maniac? Well, well, what maniac? Why, the ones going around poisoning everyone. Mrs. Abercrombie and Mrs. Snurd and Mr. Snurd and old man Grundy. All dead. Watch yourself going home, Zach. Yeah, yeah, yes. Well, uh, good night, Pete. Mr. Gressel ran all the way home. First thing he did is when he got there was to take his black market money from its hiding place. Eleven thousand dollars. Pack your things, sir. We'll leave a town. You're in trouble. They found out. I, I warned you not to sell horse meat. It's worse than that, sir. Four people are dead already. I saw them tainted meat! You, 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 you what? Smat it, Santa! Can't you hear? He killed them! He saw them poison meat! Ah! Now it's sinking into that female brain! <laughs> ah! That's it! Get mad! Get good and mad! <laughs> You're a murderer! I did it for us, Sarah! For me, you, and Junior! Uh, Junior? He's eating at Herbie Horton's house! Horton! She bought some of it! At that moment, Junior staggered into the kitchen. He looked a little green around the gills. Uh, I, I feel sick, Mommy. I... Junior, baby! <gasps> little Junior collapsed on the kitchen floor. Uh, he's dead, Zack! Dead! You killed him, too! Our son! <laughs> Our son! Sarah, put down that knife! When they unlocked Zach Gristle's butcher shop the next morning, they found Mrs. Gristle standing behind the counter, staring into space. She wore a blood-smeared apron around her neck. Before her, in the meat showcase, Zach Gristle had been clumsily carved and laid out in various trays. Good lord! Tainted meat? Tainted meat, anyone? <laughs> All right, so you ain't hungry now. You can window shop, can't you? Not interested? Eh, maybe you'd be interested in attending a oh. banquet given by the ghouls, zombies, werewolves, and vampires black market body syndicate in honor of Zach Grissel. <laughs> he will be served. <laughs> hmm, still not interested, eh? Well, how about going to the vault keeper? Then he's not interesting, too. Got a boring story for you. Then I'll dig it later with another creepy crypt collector's item. <coughs> Bye.